today's show, the sound of heavy metal music. Kansas craftsmen and women build BMW hitches. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Board Review Lodge. A baseball legend long ago helped put Humboldt, Kansas on the map. Even now, people around these parts covet the game, especially with a home field advantage that looks like this. We've got great facilities. They don't know who built them. They don't know who helped design them, but we hope someday they will. I'll give you a hint. B&W sits out on the far northwest corner of town. We are just over 500,000 square feet. We have over 400 employees. We're a big piece of several towns. We draw a lot of our employees come in from about 20 miles and in. A lot of those folks focused on building B&W's tow and stow trailer hitch, an adjustable and user-friendly hitch with different balls for all kinds of trailers. Four key components make up the hitch the swing arm, pin block, dual balls, and pins. The process starts with raw materials. Most days of the week, trucks deliver US-made steel. Forklifts get the materials off trucks in minutes. Where it goes to storage, but never sits long. This starts with these big old heavy bars of what they call cold draw 1018 steel. And then Superman over there. You have any idea how heavy one of these is? Real heavy. Paul Tyler wrestles those big bars. You got the muscles for it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he lines them up to go to the cold saw. Every time you hear that buzz and it stops, it's a cut. I'm cutting for the six inch toe and sew and the eight inch toe and sew right now. So you're the guy who cuts through bars of steel. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Paul lifts 800 of those blocks a day. These, this is probably, I don't know, I would say like five or six pounds maybe. You do the math. That adds up to nearly 5,000 pounds stacked. The stuff of superheroes. If you ask my six year old daughter, yes, I am Superman, but other than that, no. Meanwhile, that steel sawdust is a lot like watching fire. Wow. A magnet conveyor neatly clears and recycles the steel saw chips. Now the tow and stow production process goes high tech. Workers load fancy computer-controlled CNC machines to start shaping the hitch's pin block. It's a fun job. It's uh, really rewarding to see it come from the raw stock to the actual part that you can hold in your hands. Chuck Hagler is the whiz who programs these machines. It's all math. It's all math. And I wasn't uh, that good at math until I started getting into the machine shop. And this is something I really enjoy doing, so I worked hard to learn how to make it all work. The machine methodically carves and shapes the steel and adds holes for the pins. A couple minutes later, the process finishes and completed parts come out. Hang tight while the crew cleans up edges. Up next, serious sparks fly and I finally see the light. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Border View Lodge, Ice Castle Fish Houses, Aquarius Home Services, Car Arms, 
and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth. Celebrate responsibly. No doubt, workers in Humboldt, Kansas love the sound of heavy metal music. Rock on. B&W hitches twist and turn on straight machines all day long. All they're doing is testing at great stress. This is equal to the hitch being on your truck and you are pulling a massive trailer with a ton of weight. Just making sure that these things will hold up to anything. That's gonna run a while. Across the facility, David Rolls opens the doors. Receiver tube. It goes in the back of the pickup. David loads in steel. The cutting machine quickly shapes each piece and drills holes for the hitch pins. Once out, he cleans up sharp edges. Okay, while David grinds away his day, we move to catch a peek of a really bright light. Rick Hill keeps a close eye on that laser. That's one of the things I notice about you guys. You're always double checking your work. I've had a lot of mistakes, so <laughs> I, I check all the time. This speedy machine cuts hundreds of parts for the hitch swing arms. The beam melts one half inch steel, no problem. Once the laser's done, it's time for a little handiwork. You gonna put me to work or what? I'm ready to pick the pieces. Or not. All that and I don't even need my glove. The story of my life. You're unbelievable. Wait, I do still get to use my gloves. So just start stacking. A little bit like fresh donuts. Actually, they're a little more than warm. What, you want to race? Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Rick, I think, moves much more efficiently than me. You should have been a dealer in Vegas. How am I doing? Fine. Just all right. I can't believe how hot these still are. Step right up. My pile is way neater than his is. Okay, he helps wrap up my pile too. Now, those individual pieces become one part. How do we do? Good. Not bad? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad, which is good for me. The swing arm assembly becomes a dance of sorts between worker and robot. Jim Suits works alongside one of BMW's automated welders. Once you get in a rhythm, it's just easy. It's a timing thing. He stacks in individual pieces for the hitch's swing arm. Then, the robot takes over. These machines weld quickly and exactly. It's quite a bit of fun. Fun to play around with, fun to watch work. Do a lot of cool stuff. Drew demerit programs and runs the robots. He won't give them names. No, just numbers. <laughs> Jim will, if they don't quite complete the work just right. No, not that you can say out loud anyway, most of the time. <laughs> 
When we come back, we have a ball with this guy. My full name is James J. Hill. The man with 10 nicknames. I go by Jim, I go by Jimmy, I go by Jake, or my wife calls me Kilby. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Husqvarna. Iron Jaws. Banks Outdoors. FVP, Verified Proven. And by Warner's Dock. Every time a B&W employee finishes a tow and stow hitch part, their stamp of approval goes onto each piece. employees are our quality control. That's, that's their job. Employees all along the steps are, are using templates, using test fixtures, using their blueprints to make sure that we're building those to those tolerances so we know at the end it all comes together. With the tow and still swing arm and pin block ready, it's time to have a ball with this guy. My full name is James J. Kilby. I go by Jim, I go by Jimmy, I go by Jake, or my wife calls me Kilby. I call him Chief. Jim Kilby used to be the police chief around these parts. There are a lot of people out here I know professionally. I retired and came back to work. Watching machines mill these steel parts is so darn incredible. I mean, look at that. It just melts away. It's crazy. It is. You gotta look at this. This is amazing. This is the carbide bit they used to do the kind. They say, if I were to take a hammer and just tap this thing, it would absolutely disintegrate. Yet in the lathe, this thing does all the cutting. Yeah, when I walked in, you know, six years ago, I couldn't believe those any of pieces of carbide could melt through steel in seconds. It just blew your mind. Not only does the chief build these parts, he believes in them too. I worked a lot of traffic accidents where trailers would come off hitches, you know, never came off a BMW hitch. So now I'm down here working on these things, making them. This is the best grade of product I've ever seen. I'd say that's an appropriate pitch. That is so exciting. That is like a double ball drop. More exciting than New Year's. Jim checks quality, same as the other stations. There's actually 26 places to measure on this little part. Another robot welder methodically locks the balls and shaft together with a thick weld. Meanwhile, across the way. Pins drop non-stop. Chris Northcutt creates Stow and Go's hitch pins. He machines them in a special oil, then stacks them. How many pins? 3,300 per basket. These baskets can hold only a thousand pounds. How do you know that? Um, my supervisor informs me of all this. <laughs> I weigh a pin and divide it by a thousand. We call Chris b and towel guy. You must go through a lot of towels. Yes. <laughs> I go through about four or five a day to keep my hands clean. The oil is good, it makes my hands soft. <laughs> Yes, he has a little fun, but Chris cares deeply about this product and also this place. I have a gooseneck ball, and when I ran a gooseneck ball, I bought a gooseneck from my Chevy, and I looked on the bottom of it, and it has my stamp on the bottom of it. So I have a ball that I made here. I enjoy it. I've been here six years, and I still like watching the machines run. 
Up next, tow and stow parts earn their colors, but it takes a ton of electricity. No, really. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Lacan Marine, Mouse Mix, and by White Bear Lake Superstore. BMW out of Humboldt, Kansas cares about three colors red, white, and blue. We pride ourselves on taking U.S. steel, using U.S. workers, and building the best hitch we possibly can. With steel parts now machined and welded, they go to the guy with well-worn arms. Yeah, they get a little sore. <laughs> Especially when we hang about 3,000 of them a day. Clint Hagler preps parts for cleaning and primer. They first dip in tanks to wash off any oil and dirt. Next step is this tank, etching, which will help the paint stick to the part. Comes over here, then it goes into E-coat. That's where the primer is applied, and this red light will click on in just a second. When that's going, it means there's this electric charge, high voltage that helps the paint stick to the part. Quick dip there, then it runs up here to the oven, all the way back down to the far end where it'll cure and pop out for the next step. They go up through the oven, cure out, and come down the oven, back around and get hung on this line here to the powder coated texture black. to the guy in the unique getup. Yeah, kind of looks like a space suit, so. I like it. <laughs> Thanks. Derek Manley sprays polyurethane powder into every corner and every crevice of every piece that sneaks by. Our toe and still is really nice, so we're pretty good about not causing any life spots. I usually count my strokes and do the same amount of strokes every time for a consistent finish. The parts slowly track into an oven. Heat melts the powder and locks it to the hitch. Those completed parts trickle out still piping hot from the paint process. They need to sit for a bit and slowly cool down. While that happens, I get called to the office. It's like the principal's office. But it's Jeremiah's. Jeremiah Ivy's space, the place with the high tech gadgets. Right, right. And so I'm going to take this assembly and compare it to our engineer's CAD models. Wow. So he's literally just painting on the computer. Jeremiah uses this gear to double check all the tolerances of B&W's parts. I took a lot of information here, uh, 1.3 and a half, so over a million points of data just on that, and that was a you know, pretty quick scan. So my very unprofessional eyes tell me this is a good piece? Yes. Is oh, that yeah. accurate? Absolutely. Absolutely. I yeah. think I'm qualified. A probe gives a second opinion. Again, the part test spot on. It took 432 points just doing a scan on that to make sure that we've got the correct diameter and location. That's why we have the name we have. We, we create a customer base off of perfect hitches. I think we deserve to have the equipment to make them perfect. Finally, parts can become one hitch. Right here, we're just but assembling this uh, toe and sew together and, and getting her shipped out. Phil Jacob leads this team. Um, I'm just putting the pins in and the ball and I hand it off to the next person. It makes it nice to work with people that you get along with. Angela Hobbs gives each hitch its badge. We're kind of nice. 
driving around, checking out the back of the trucks. Oh, look, there's one. You feel kind of proud, I guess. Proud of the now boxed and wrapped tow and stows. Pallets of product go into the warehouse where they rarely sit that long. Most of these will go out the doors within days, not weeks or months. You know, B&W Tow and Stows, after what you saw today, I hate to do it, but I think I'm gonna steal their line anyway. It's probably the last hit you'll ever need. We don't build quantity, we build quality, and our brand, our customers expect that from us.